three, four, five. When they told me that Beyond the Mask had 750 special effect shots, I was blown away. Hollywood movies don't have 750 special effect shots. 750 special effect shots. That's insane. Many people think about filmmaking as defined by its production. You know, the sets, the actors, the cameras, the costumes. And when they imagine post-production, they think about an editor, you know, working alone in his office, clicking away. But the post-production effort on Beyond the Mask was almost as large in scale as the production effort. We have just been so delighted by the audience and the critics' reaction to the visual effects in this film. Now, Beyond the Mask, it's not a hundred million dollar movie. But I think for movies in our weight class, the visual effects are really fantastic. It was really awesome to see the set that we had created in real life and then to be able to take digital elements and extend them with, with 3D and matte paintings. You know, technology in our day and age makes it possible to create believable visual effects that can incorporate into the real sets and enhance the overall work. In the same way that our physical sets help us to build the period world which we immerse our audience, the visual effects take the world one step further by establishing the expanse of the world that we're in. You know, from the English countrysides to the Philadelphia cityscapes, the multiple ships in the harbor, the visual effects are a tool that we can use to bring scope and scale to this film that would otherwise be impossible. So, so I did a lot of concept art early on in the post-production phase, detailing out what the world might, might look like past the edges of our physical sets that we have built. We had 750 visual effect shots in Beyond the Mask, so one out of every three shots in the film contains a visual effect. Now some of the shots are noticeable right away uh, because it's from a different time period. You say, hey listen, that Philadelphia Harbor doesn't exist anymore. But for many other shots, the audience will never know the difference. Great example. There was a fight scene in the movie uh, that was shot during the summertime. And when our fight choreographer finally saw the finished footage, the finished movie, uh, there's snow. We added some light snow and we desaturated all the grass from green to brown. And he did not realize that we hadn't shot it in the wintertime. Because we did some shooting in the wintertime for the movie, and he was thinking that's when we'd done it. So when we reminded him, no, no, that was actually shot during the summer, he was like, really? And that is the kind of response we want from the audience, where they never suspect that what they're seeing has been affected. The Philadelphia City Street is another example of this marriage of uh, real sets and visual effects. Can I help you, sir? Yes, please. I'm looking for Benjamin Franklin. The section of the street that we built was 150 feet long, about 12 feet high. It had multiple buildings. But as you move into the visual effects, it's not just, okay, let's build it, but first you have to decide what goes there. Our visual effects team spent many weeks just designing the buildings and the layout of the street and then the entire city. So you digitally map it out and make sure that as you're pointing the camera in each direction, the right buildings are appearing in the right spots. You know, every single building had to be designed, everything you see. And the team did such a great job uh, designing and then building in real life the bottoms of the buildings where most of the action takes place. But then when it comes to scenes like the rooftop scene, we need to know what the tops of the buildings are going to look like as well. You know, from the crown moldings uh, to the chimneys to the eaves, all of this stuff has to get figured out. And it just doesn't happen. You can't actually go online and just buy it somewhere. There's a level of customization and, and detailing that must take place to match this time period and to make each and every building unique and realistic. I remember sitting down with AutoCAD uh, with Nick one day, and we spent about eight hours just laying out the crown molding for Franklin's print shop. So, so we had a ton of matte paintings in, in this film, um, but what we would do is, instead of traditional matte painting, sort of the old school style is you're actually painting on a piece of glass and putting it in front of the, in front of the lens, but what we would do, it was all a digital workflow, the shot would usually be, you know, it'd be a green screen plate. There'd be something, a character or whatever, in front of a green screen. Um, and, and then usually there's, there's, there's elements of real set in the background to help, to help give that uh, reality feel to it. And then we'd take that, that would go to our roto team, and they would uh, carefully cut out the green screen, and then that would be given to the matte artists 
and then we would create the background through a combination of just 2D uh, digital matte paintings and we used uh, a, a, a lot of 3D backgrounds as well, um, which we kind of combined with the matte paintings to, to give us the best look. And then that, that rotoscoped uh, green screen footage and the matte paintings would all be given to a comp artist who would then take and combine it all together and render out the final shot. We had 30 artists in North America and Europe, as well as teams in India and Nepal. So literally, our team was working around the globe, around the clock. And we used a really fun tool uh, called Shotgun, which is kind of like Facebook for visual effects artists. And there's a constant stream of feedback and input for each shot, each step along the way. Now, because camaraderie could be lacking uh, compared to being on set together, we got creative and we said, hey, let's throw some virtual parties, a chance where people from all over the globe can get together. And so we, uh, at Christmas, we, we had a virtual pizza party where everyone on the team would order pizza, get together, review some of the shots, and hang out you know, on a Google Hangout. So really, no matter where you were located, uh, it was really a, a fun chance to pull the whole team together and create the visual effects for Beyond the Mask. <laughs>